everybody. Today, we will be touring our Littleton, New Hampshire Rotebeck factory. Here we build the 910 and the 915 Elite Loaders. Come with me, let's go see the factory. My name is David White. I'm the production manager here in Littleton. Now, in this office, we have all of our main business practices going on. So in the first office, we're going to meet Melissa, who is HR. Going into our next set of offices, you're going to meet our service team. In here, we have Russell, Andrew, Trevor, Dennis. In this next office, you're going to see our day-to-day -day support staff. These guys help us with all of our support needs. We have purchasing, continuous improvement, and engineering. All right, Callie, before we head out to the production floor, I'd like to stop in one more office. This is uh, more technical support. The unique thing about this crew is they all started out in production. So unique to Rotebeck, we like to encourage people to grow up through the company. We have Tyler, he's our inventory specialist, making sure we have all the correct parts that we need in the right places. Uh, we have Jono, he's our nester. He's fitting all the parts on the steel sheets. Uh, we have Colin, he's our robot specialist. Our first stop at the Littleton factory, we're going to show you our metal working. The plasma cutter will be the first machine we show you. This is where it all starts. The loaders come in as a flat piece of steel. We show Jono nesting all the pieces. This is where they get precision cut. We cut everything from 3 16 to 2 inch steel. So depending on the, the part need, we have variation of availability. So our next stop on this process is going to be the press break. This is where we take all of these cut parts and we bend them to the necessary shape and size that is needed for production. That's right. Currently, we have one of the larger components being bent right now. It's a Tollum side. We bend also parts for grapples. You know, it's, a, again, another precision piece of equipment. Everything is bent to specifications. When everything is bent, we have uh, several parts that go over to our chamfer station for some precision grinding to make sure they fit well in the welding jigs. Even though they're cut, precision on the table, we do that little extra care to make sure everything fits well for the welders. The first stop in our welding department will be our robots. So Callie, as you know, Robot One has four cells. It runs the turntable, which is the operator station of the elites, the ladders, which they climb up into the operator station. It creates the stabilizer, which are the legs of the loader. And it also does what's called the floor, which goes with the turntable and the operating system. Our next robot in line is our Robot 2. It runs the 910 main boom and the stick boom. The robot does run by itself, but all of our robot operators are expert welders as well. So they remove the product and they do all the finishing touches to make sure uh, everything is up to quality and up to specification. So our next station that we're going to show you is the column station, where we pack and weld our column. Right here, we can see the operator getting ready to pack another one. Uh, this process takes about four hours because of that improvement that we did over in the chamfer station. The next step from the tacking is the, the manual welding of all the welds inside and outside of the column. It's put on this positioner. You know, they can rotate it when they need to to get that quality and to make sure they don't miss anything and everything is welded to spec. It takes us about how many uh, hours? It could be upwards to six hours. Uh, six welding. hours of manual welding to get one column done. These guys work hard at making these loaders. So next we're going to show you the manual welding of our 915 mains and sticks. One of the main differences between the 910 and the 915 are the size. So we have jigs here that are able to hold the larger sizes of the 915 main and stick booms. Now we're gonna show you our machining. All right, let's start with the Axia. The Korea Axia runs our main booms and our stitch booms and our columns for the 910 and the 915 Elite. As you can see right now, they're setting up and getting ready to run a stick boom. What they're running on this is a part that will receive a bushing, where they marry the main and the stick, which we will see in the final assembly process. Let's head down and look at the column. So they're preparing the column to run, but this is where we would have it in the jig. It machines the top of the column so it can receive a big bushing where the turntable and the operator sits. This is a very large 
CNC machine. It has about 40 tools that are in the tool changer right there. Uh, we can do a lot on this piece of equipment. So here at the Akuma, we have a dual stage pallet. So this jig get, receives the part, the part gets loaded into the machine on one side. Then when they're ready, they transition the part into the actual machining chamber where the operator then goes through the process of making sure it's machined to the specification that we need it for our construction standard. So we have many different sizes and shapes of pallets depending on the part that we need to machine. It's also a very interesting fact that this is one of the original machines to the USA Manufacturing Group. So the next step that we're going to show you is we're going to walk on over to the paint prep. So when the parts get brought over, they start here in the staging area. All of these parts have been manufactured, machined, welded, cut, bent, and they're brought into here to get ready to go through the prep process for paint. The prep process includes cleaning up the part, deslagging, taking off any irregularities that might have happen during our normal manufacturing process. So after the washing, through the rail system, all the parts go through the blaster. So we're removing the mill scale, any uh, welding glass, any imperfections, and it also goes and provides a temper for the steel. And it really cleans it up and, and prepares it for uh, that good adhesion of the paint. After that, they go into the paint booth right here. As you can see, our paint crew is constantly moving. These guys are always working on the next part that goes through. There are hundreds of parts that go through each of our paint booths within the week. So everything that every other department handles singly, these guys handle all of their parts right. through this paint. So as you can see, everything is very well lit. The ventilation is good for the worker. Uh, even though they're in a respirator, it's good to have the air nice and clean uh, for them to be able to see. So after we painted all of the parts, we have to give it a little bit of time to dry. David, how long does it take for paint to dry? Almost half a shift, so maybe six hours for some things. Some colors dry a little faster than others, but in general, it's about that time. Speaking of colors, we have a silver, a black, and a yellow that all are standard Rotobac colors, but we do have the ability for custom paint jobs. It's a high quality primer and paint that's used on every single piece of this product. So now we're gonna show you where we assemble our heads and floors for the loader. So this is a small but tight station, but they are very effective with what they do. They have a positioner over here, and this helps them to install a slewing ring into the head that we need to make it be able to move back and forth on the loader. Once they're done installing that, they move it over here, and they finish installing some electricals and hydraulics, like David said, uh, and marry it to the floor that they would have built on the other side of the station. We like to keep everything flowing in the right direction. So after we leave the station, we're gonna take you and show you where we build our main booth and our stick booth. Okay, here we have our uh, area that we call boom bench. It's where the telescopic stick booths and the main booms are assembled. It's for both the 910 and the 915. In general, it's close to the same process. Right here, we have a 910 telescopic stick boom that's almost fully built. Uh, this is where they add all the hydraulic tubing, any electrical components, the warning labels, or any other sticker. It'll be going on this main boom that they start next. Uh, this, again, is a 910 main boom. Uh, we have an example right over here, a main boom and a telescopic stick boom, almost completely assembled. They're doing what's called the marrying process right now, where they put them together, they put the pins in, and they put the cylinder, and they test the cylinder, make sure everything's functioning well, and then they send it down to final assembly. This is where we put the column on the positioner, they put the loader head, everything gets torqued to specifications. They'll bring the completed main and stick boom over, they'll assemble that, and then when everything's together, everything gets tested. The lights, the controls, the hydraulics, they look for any leaks, they make sure the main boom retracts correctly, uh, they do a swing test, make sure the controls work, and then the loader is complete and ready for final quality inspection. Here we have our final inspection process. 
You know, similar to if you were looking at a car or something in a manufacturing facility, it's going over everything with a fine tooth comb. They have a checklist of things that they need to look at. After that, they sign off that it's ready to go and it's ready for the customer. So we showed you how we made all of our parts, and now we'd like to show you where we store our parts. So we built this warehouse in 2019. This is our shipping and receiving warehouse. We store all of our manufacturing parts up here, and we ship and receive out all of our finished goods for the customer. Yeah, so welcome to the Rodebeck warehouse. Uh, so what we have here is our staging area for everything that's going to be headed out today. These are new grapples headed out to customers. We've got some parts and crates, and they'll all be leaving today on a, a less than truckload trailer. As you move throughout the warehouse, this is our staging area for outbound. Our staging area here is for anything that we're going to send back to the factory. This is usually full of things, but we don't happen to have a truck today, so not a whole lot going back. As you proceed to the warehouse, over to you, this side is our mail yoke rack, where we store all of our mail yokes for, for new grapples for customers. And as you proceed to this staging area, this is where we will stage everything that's going to head to our facility in Groveton, New Hampshire. As you move down throughout the warehouse this way, in this area we have our staging area. So this area is usually empty. When we unload the truck in the morning, this will be full. We'll come in here and we'll check everything, make sure it's accurate, make sure the serial numbers match, go through all the paperwork. Once it's good to go, we'll start putting everything away on shelves or we'll start sending them out the door to customers. And as you move down here to this direction, so this is a brand new rack that uh, was actually built for us at the factory in Canada. They made it just the right specifics to be able to support our booms, all of our hollow tubes and our ladders so that we could get those things off the floor so they weren't damaged before they got sent down to production. As you make your way through, this is all new racking. Uh, there used to be CNC machines in here. Uh, we finally got the CNC machines out. We set up all this racking and it's been a huge benefit so we can now get all the, the small items up off the floor and stack them high. You can see everything from oil coolers, seats, tanks, We've got boom sides, everything's stored here neat and, and orderly in fashion so that the guys can come up here and prep their kits and take them down to the production floor. As you move through, you see more of the small parts. These are also kitted part items that'll be brought down to the production floor. Small yokes. And over here on this wall, we have all of our cylinders. So these are all the cylinders for loaders, for booms, stabilizers. They'll store them up here and then whenever they're ready to take them, they'll bring them down and get them painted. So up here, this is our parts mezzanine where we'll have all of our small parts for customers. We have everything from sleeve kits ready to go out to the customers if they need them, uh, grapple tips, motors, control assemblies, collector's assemblies, everything from chain link assemblies, anything that's gonna go out in a small box out via UPS to the customer, whether they need it next day, two day service, that's what we take care of up here. Every one of our locations actually has a bin location and a part number on them for accuracy so that when we're pulling these things, the, the guy knows exactly which part's in the bin and what the customer needs. As you work your way down here, you'll see our actual UPS station. Uh, our employee, Zach Pierce, is over here getting things ready to go out today. These are the small packages. So he will be receiving orders all day on his computer. Uh, when he gets the order, he'll print it out. He'll go out and he'll find the parts, bring them over to the UPS bench, get them packaged up, weigh them, put them in the system for shipment, he'll load up this cart, and at four o'clock every day, UPS will come and they'll get everything on this crate and we'll get our parts out to our customers. And then as you make your way out, this is our loading area. And today we happen to have a load of uh, five loaders going out to a customer with some grapples and some crates. What we have here now is everything was staged, ready to go. The grapples for the customer, the crate for the customer, everything is all set. What the guys are gonna do here now is they're gonna pick up the cranes and pick up the uh, loaders and they'll get them on the trailer in position. Now as you can see as they're loading this, they've got two hooks on top. Those are meant to hold the loader in position. We've got guys on each corner of the loader so they can make sure that it gets on there safely. When they get the loader to the trailer, they'll go ahead and they'll set it down. They have a roller block for the nose so that, that way they can reset it afterwards. So when they'll get this on the trailer, they'll put the nose onto the roller block. It'll roll out a little bit. Once they're sure that the loader is under the right height limit, they'll take the 
chain, they'll hook it up to the boom, they'll lift the boom, they'll remove the roller wheels, and they'll put a block underneath that. Once all of the loaders are on, then the guys will come out with a fork truck and they'll start loading on all the uh, grapples and crates and things like that, all the accessories that go with the loaders. We're gonna fill it all. The customer's gonna get everything they want on one truck load, and that's really what we try to do for the customer. They wanna get everything they ordered on one shipment, and this is what we do to save them money. Okay, and that concludes the factory tour of the Littleton, New Hampshire Rotobeck facility. I would like to thank you, Callie, for helping with the tour. Uh, I would like to thank the staff for all their hard work. We couldn't do it without them. I would like to give heartfelt thanks to all of our customers. We really, truly enjoy doing what we do for you, and we put a lot of work and craftsmanship into the products that we send to you. So again, thank you everybody for coming to see us today. We hope you enjoyed what you saw.